This is part three of a four-part series that details the medical kidnapping of Amun Ra, which has now also led to the removal of Tyron and Saisha's second child, their newborn baby, Aset. If you have not watched videos one and two, please go back and watch them so you can have the context of the full story. In the last video, I mentioned that the sheriff had released a statement to me as well as to Fox News, saying that Amon Ra was in a life or death situation at the hospital. Now the sheriff that released this to me, his name is Dennis Romano. He's the captain of the Child Protective Division inside the Manatee County Sheriff's Department. He was not present during the investigation. So all he's going off of is reading the investigation that was done by his colleague, investigator Danielle McCoy. Now I had reached out to get a statement from Danielle McCoy. She forwarded my emails and my phone call to Dennis and that is who I had a conversation with. I asked him, what is the clear line between a parent's right to make medical decisions for their child and the state's right to come in and intervene and remove the child from the parent? That needs to be clear. He responded with a question. He said, well, wouldn't you do anything that the doctors asked of you? I quickly responded with a no, actually, we are also a holistic family and we see functional medicine practitioners. And if there was an emergency situation that landed me inside of a hospital, I would absolutely expect that I could go get a second or third opinion. He rebuttaled and said, well, I'm not a doctor, so I'm just gonna listen to the doctors and what they say. You are going to see in this video details from the medical records that show that Amon Ra's doctors never said he was on the brink of death. This video will detail the clear omission of evidence and the fraudulent claims made against the family. The same claims that their attorneys have detailed out very, very precisely and been trying to hand to the offices and the judges saying, look at this, we have everything you need to dismiss this case. You can see from my conversation with the sheriff that we are already entering the subjective territory, a battle of beliefs, which has zero place inside of the law. You could visit three different doctors who went to the same exact school, who have the same exact degrees, and you could get three vastly different medical opinions. According to a study done by the same brand of hospital, Johns Hopkins Hospital, titled, Study suggests medical errors are now the third leading cause of death in the US. Analyzing medical death rate data over an eight year period, Johns Hopkins patient safety experts have calculated that more than 250,000 deaths per year are due to medical error in the US. Their figure, published May 3rd in the BMJ, surpasses the U.S. Center for Disease's third leading cause of death, which is listed as respiratory disease. Even the agencies in charge of our health are having vastly different reporting. I mean, look in video one at the Nikolaev family. Against the wishes of the hospital that they didn't like, they left anyways, and they went straight to another hospital. They said, you could go, we'll keep the baby. So where is our parents' choice? Feeling increasingly trapped and desperate, Anna removed Sammy from the hospital and took him directly to Kaiser for a second opinion. And when they got there, they said, why does this baby need to be seen? We don't need to admit this child. When we went to Kaiser, basically, it's the whole different thing. Down there, we, we came there and they're like, why would you want to check him? The baby looks fine. So how was that possible? That one hospital 10 minutes earlier was saying the baby needed immediate heart surgery and they called CPS. And another hospital with the same credentials is saying this baby doesn't need to be admitted. Okay, we're gonna start the timeline of the hospital right now. First, I want everyone to see what Amon Ra looked like as soon as he checked into the hospital. This is Amon Ra in the hospital with his amazing mother, my wife, Sai. This is how bad he was doing in the hospital, my people. You see Amon Ra, right? Y'all wanna see the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And the family also provided me with full length clips. Here's a video of Ra on February 26th. This is his first day inside of the hospital. They had gotten there the evening before. Ra is eating. Oh, oh man, some dinner teeth. Ra Ra is eating avocado. It has good brain developing nutrients in it. We got some hummus, which is protein. Okay, Ra Ra wants more. More. He was eating his solid food. He was just reluctant to take fluids, which is why they went there in the first place. She wanted to make sure he wasn't dehydrated and that he could get IV fluids if necessary. And here he is eight days later on March 5th, 2021. Time to read. Keeping some normalcy in all this. Mommy needs some water. Raw. You want to sit? Rising together. In the shadowy woods, one clear summer rising. 
three tattoo. <laughs> he finished within 15 minutes. Yeah, I put four, 40 more in there, but I decided to just dump it back because okay, that's he, fine. it was like past that time. Okay, good. So he, he did so it. He did the 80. 80 within 15. So okay, yeah, and he's right, pretty right. he's pretty satisfied. He's not over full or anything. Good, so I good. think he'll be perfect. He'll, so be, he'll be good be for the next for one. For the next one at 8. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. You need anything? Just story time? I'm good. Just story time. <laughs> but if you think of anything before, because we do shift change at 7. So if you think of anything beforehand, okay. just let me know. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Rara. Fox Cubs. In the audio of the removal, when Danielle McCoy steps in the room, in addition to saying that it was because of refusing a B12 shot, which you'll see in a moment that Saisha never refused, she said that, that it's not just that, it's other things. They've been talking to you this whole time. So you're saying you're taking my child away from me? I am. Who said we neglected You refused a B12 shot today. I didn't refuse it. I said his no, father's no, no. Right now, it's you can't take happen. my child away from me. I can't. You never said I wasn't taking the, the B12, B12 shot. is not the only reason for the removal. But there's no proof that what I did anything. Then you can you argue can't take my child tomorrow. away from we, me. We've That's not what happened. I didn't Doctors do anything. consulting with the team daily. I've written my report I didn't and this do anything, is the findings. Danielle. Danielle, why? You can't. And there was a claim made in the investigation that Saisha continuously denied medical treatment during her stay. I've read over the requests that the doctors were making during her stay. And from what I can see, she wasn't denying anything. She was asking questions. She was asking for more time. Unless it was absolutely medically necessary, she was advocating for her child. So it seems like the hospital might have found her difficult to work with. And that is why they falsely labeled it as denying treatments. So here are the recommendations from the doctor. Soon after she arrived, the doctor said an NG tube might be necessary to bring nutrients through his nose. However, his mom noticed he was less reluctant to drink fluids on his own that day, and she requested for the doctors to give four more days so her son could be officially weaned from breast milk and just be taking fluids on his own. So then on March 3rd, the doctor said that he might need a GI tube that would bring nutrition directly to his stomach. She again asked for additional time before they do that because now Amon Ra was drinking the formula that was prescribed by the hospital, which was Kate Farms formula. And note here that the Kate Farms formula also has B12 inside of it. She didn't want to jump to the most invasive medical treatment for her child. And at no point did they look at her and say, Saisha, this is life or death. He needs this GI tube in him now or he is going to die. No, they said, okay, yeah, we'll wait and discuss it next week. That is not how any doctor who believes a child is about to die behaves. And there are risks that come with placing a GI tube. Here's a study done on pediatric gastrostomy tube placement. In the introduction, it says, gastrostomy tube placement is one of the most common operations performed in children, and it is plagued by high complication rates. Here's from another study talking about what some of those complications are. Placement of catheters, drains, shunts, and tubes in children can lead to serious or even fatal complications at the moment of placement, such as hemorrhage at insertion, or in the long term, such as infections and migration into adjacent organs. So when something has risk, and it's also not immediately medically necessary, how can you, in your investigation, write a claim saying that the mother denied medical treatments? The doctors agreed every time Saisha asked for more time. Here's just one more example of advocating and not denying. The hospital gave Amon Ra a liquid multivitamin drop and he vomited. Saisha saw that it wasn't a vegan formula and so she requested for it not to be given to him again and instead to just be given the multivitamin that they approved of that also has B12 in it and his iron drops. <sighs> All right, this next one. These are the progress notes and attending notes by neurologist Charles Shutt and Dr. Richard Knopf. B12 might be a little low, but I'm not sure exactly how to interpret it for age. Fortunately, his exam is not consistent with subacute combined degeneration. Now, with his dietary adjustments, he should be receiving adequate supply. Neurology recommends parents follow up in three months. Do you guys hear that? The sheriff's department is saying it was life or death. We were also told by these medical professionals that unless he got the treatment that he needed, ongoing consistent treatment, that he would die. These are the two doctors that had Amon Ra's blood work, and they said it might be a little low, but we don't even know how to make recommendations based on the age. The dietary adjustment was the introduction of Kate Farms formula, which has B12 in it, and the multivitamin drop, which also has B12 in it. And then they said, follow up with us in three months. These are not doctors that are thinking this child is about to die. 
But now, because she's under investigation from CPS, she can't leave. So at this point, Amon Ra is being seen by a lot of doctors that are going in and out of the room. And Saisha knows they're imprisoned inside of this hospital right now. So she requests a care conference because she wants to make sure that she understands exactly what is being asked of her so that everyone can stay on the same page. At this point, Saisha is confirming the weight goals with every doctor that comes in, again, so she can make sure, okay, what goals do you want him to meet? Just so she can understand when they can be discharged and what she's doing, as if this hospital stay could not get any worse. On March 8th, the social worker comes in and tells Saisha that per the request of CPS investigator Danielle McCoy, she is no longer allowed to take Amon Ra outside into the reflection gardens. They have to stay inside the hospital at all times now. Are you kidding me? Now she can't even go outside with him. Why? Why? There's no explanation for this. Here's a video from the next day on March 9th. This is after she's already been told there's no even going outside now. Dad, Dad. Dad, Dad. We got a red block, a purple block. What does it feel like, Ra Ra? I mean, she is pregnant during this time. She is under investigation by CPS. Can you imagine what her body is feeling? The same day on March 9th, the care conference with all of Ra's primary team of doctors is held. Tyron appears telephonically there, and they all agreed on a weight gain goal of 13 grams per day for three days, and then they could be discharged. And the doctors also said that they were making a recommendation to add an additional B12 supplement. On March 11th, one of the doctors comes in and gives Saisha two options for this additional vitamin B12 supplement that they're requesting. Option one, four weeks of intramuscular vitamin B12 shot with one given inpatient before they're discharged from the hospital. Option two is three weeks of oral vitamin B12 with one intramuscular shot given before they leave the hospital. Then Saisha is left with a threat. You have until 12 p.m. to decide. Saisha then begins to seek medical advice about this. She talks to another one of Amon Ra's doctors, Dr. Inglese. She tells the doctor the threat that had just been given to her and asks, is the B12 shot life or death for Amon Ra? And he says, no, it's not. Um, I just learned today that they actually want me to do it for three weeks outpatient and one here. So I just learned of that today. What I was told by nutrition was that they wanted to do four weeks outpatient. Do you feel like he needs B12 in order to be cleared? Like, it, does it have to be like intramuscular or can it be like, um, droplets and liquid like we've been giving him like through the syringe or I guess that's, that's... based off of his brain activity like if, is it a life or death situation no. for him to no. No. it's not a life or death situation for him to get a b12 shot like right now like this hour no, no. Uh, which is so obvious because even their option number two was three weeks of oral vitamin b12 they just wanted to see her give this one shot within the hospital. Why? When oral vitamin B12 is literally just as potent. Then she reaches out to the hospital nutritionist and leaves voicemails to try to find her because she wants to discuss the options with her. And she also wants Tyron's feedback. She's on this deadline, she's been threatened. Then at 12.07 p.m., March 11th, the social worker walks in and explains that she had until 12 p.m. and since it's 12.07, they have written it down as a denial. Shortly after, CPS investigator Danielle McCoy, with armed police officers, walked into the hospital room to tell Saisha they were taking her baby. We're going to end part three with a question. If your child was being removed by force from you, where is the very next place that you would want your child to be? With a safe and loving family member of yours, right? That is who CPS claims that it always prioritizes. Well, Tyron's mother, the grandmother of Amon Ra, along with Saisha and Tyron, have been begging the judge to place Amon Ra with his grandmother. Manatee County says a judge chose to place Amon Ra at first in a medical foster care home. The procedures of them stating that this, our son needed to be in their care and then placed into a medical foster so he can receive the proper medica medical care that he needs. These are their statements. And to find out that when they placed him, he didn't get placed in a medical foster he was placed in a normal foster. Just in, in our local environment of Saisha's sister that works with foster care children in Manatee County and also my mother, this is the director of a child care facility. So we have qualified, overly qualified relatives that are here that were not interviewed 
um, upon removing our son. Why do they deny her her grandchild? We're going to talk about that in part four of this video. Please share parts one through three as far as you can to help get this family story out. You can find parts one to three on my YouTube channel for an easy link to share on Facebook or through email. And they will also be uploaded to my Instagram so you can share from there as well. In the description below, there are calls to action, people that you can write to to try to bring these babies home to their parents. And you can also find a link to their GoFundMe page in the description. My son, our work's just begun. You are the chosen one to shine the light on the pain. The peace inside will remain.